I can't believe I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna open up this bottle of wine. Now I view this as spun gold because it is really hard to find. So here we go. Stay tuned for this review of this beautiful bottle of Cabernet Franc coming from Ontario, Canada. I broke the seal, I opened the bottle up, and uh, for me this is a really uh, kind of a bittersweet moment, only because, and it doesn't have to be, I'll just point it to you that way, it's uh, being in Ontario in um, uh, May this year was a great experience and putting foot on ground, and I've said it in another video, and I'll place that video right here on wines from Ontario, Canada, is uh, for me it's really important to put foot on ground because, you know, I can look on a map, I can, uh, you know, look at pictures, I can imagine what it's like, I can taste wines from the region, right? But I don't know what that experience is going to be like, and I think that's really important to do. And uh, so what we have right here is uh, my Canadian flag. I wish I had a uh, Ontario flag, so appropriate, right, uh, to have for this video. And of course I love props, I love uh, flags, I like to have uh, anything that's going to make the video pop a little more. Now, for me, I, I actually could have done this video, you know, two months ago, or a month and a half ago at least. Uh, I looked at my queue and I thought, the only reason I did it, only reason is uh, for me, getting wines from Ontario is rather difficult. I can get any ice wine I want, right? That's easy to get. But when it comes to the uh, non-stickies or the non-sweet wines from Canada, it's really, really hard to get. I think in the future that's going to change. I'm an optimist. I believe that that's going to be a different thing. You get to meet the people who are producing the wines. And uh, so this is uh, owned by Andrew Brooks and his wife, Christine Brooks. Now, when I was visiting in May of this year, Andrew Brooks was uh, pouring his wines and talking about his experience. And I think it was a really great you know, way of you know, looking at what they're doing. I feel such a great privilege of being there and uh, really you know, going through the experience of tasting uh, four different wineries. And if I would have known better, I should have purchased more wines. And uh, it's different from getting wines from the LCBO, which is a provincial uh, run store versus having wines that I should have just bought you know, on the spot. But I'm really glad I bought this wine. And it just reminds me, well, I will go back. So that's one way of thinking of wines, which is the reason I think and I have this uh, belief that people don't open up wines, and I'm myself included, is when will I get back? When will I be able to get that wine again and uh, re-enjoy that experience or, you know, visit that experience again, shall we say, a little bit better said. Um, but for me, that's a really great way of thinking of wine. Don't, you know, make it so rare, or so difficult or out of your reach, right? Uh, I find that when I'm more positive and uh, put it out there in the universe, shall we say, about a, maybe a specific region, I want to go back again. I have to go back. I'm not sure why, you know, there's an alignment in the stars or something like that. Uh, but somehow when you vocalize that and you have that positive belief, it definitely happens, uh, at least to the best of my experience. And for me, I love Toronto, I love Ontario. So for me, I think this one is absolutely exemplary. And uh, so Cabernet Franc is the number one uh, Vitis Vinifera wine produced in Ontario. And uh, so this producer does four wines, and I love the names, and they each have significance in terms of their experience, uh, the owners, uh, uh, Andrew and Christine Brooks. So if I'm not mistaken, this is their first wine that they did produce. And uh, so I'll bring this a little closer. There are some features to Ontario and Canadian wine labels that are different from U.S. wine labels. So back 10 cellars established uh, 2002, the Big Leap 2013 vintage Cabernet Franc. Uh, VQA's Lincoln Lakeshore. Now the VQA's Vintners Quality Alliance, which also is uh, speaking of the specific sub-region. So there are uh, three larger regions, uh, Niagara, and so this is a sub-region in Niagara. So maybe you can view this as a sub-appellation. Right here, you're going to see some uh, comments about the wine itself. And uh, also it talks about the, the uh, alcohol content, which is 13% ABV. And uh, VQA is this uh, certification here, so Vintners Quality Alliance. And uh, so this is not, you can't just put this on a label, you have to earn this label. And uh, it's a beautiful quality produced wine, screw cap. So they have three other wines, the Big Reach Racing, as well as Rose Colored Glasses uh, Rosé as well as Blood, Sweat and Years Pinot Noir. That really refers to the difficulty of creating Pinot Noir. And Pinot Noir is difficult no matter where you are on the planet to create. So it's a little bit of that homage and that experience that uh, the Brooks had. So for me, uh, getting back to basics here, of getting to, uh, I think a wine is really exemplary. I think some 
Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc is really specific, right? Uh, from uh, Loire Valley, you're gonna taste it differently from Virginia to uh, Long Island in New York, as well as, uh, you know, here in California and around the world. And uh, sometimes it can be much more herbaceous or a little more uh, pepper driven. But instead, this is a really great, beautiful, lyrical, um, I would say even elegant Cabernet Franc. So first scent characterization, flavor profile, and the point score. So on this, I'm getting into cherry, blackberry, leather, heavily wooded forest, moistened earth, as well as uh, cedar wood pile. Next is the flavor characterization, then the point score. Notes on this wine include cherry, cassis, pepper, thyme, bay leaf, and a hint of cardamom. This wine is a 9.3 out of my 10.0 scale. I think it has 93 points out of 100 points. And um, for me, you know, again, I'm going to go back to Ontario. I hope at some point, you know, if you do go to Toronto, you should look out uh, for resources. I'll put my tour operator that I went on to visit this uh, particular winery, and they do, you know, different wineries on every single tour they do. But for me, it's my way of, uh, you know, releasing that anxiety of traveling to a wine country that I don't know. Uh, that well or have been to only a few times. So for me, it really takes out all the guesswork. So that's one way to experience that and to visit wineries like this. So when you are at wineries and you're tasting Ontario, pick up the bottles and buy them there because often they're smaller uh, production and you won't find them at the LCBO in uh, Toronto or other uh, cities in Ontario. Uh, beautiful wine, great experience. More information will be listed down below on the producer. The like button's there as well, so please give a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. The subscription button's right there. And uh, you know, I, I wish I would have brought back more wine. So I'm not gonna live in a world of regret, just one where I just promised myself to go back. So do me another favor, share this video on your favorite social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram and WordPress. Thank you for watching today. Stay tuned for more. Salud.